back uh, in the early part of the pandemic um, when we were in lockdown, uh, we, we were doing all this stuff with uh, Facebook and videos and things like that to help help you all stay engaged and help you to remember, you know, that the parish was still here praying for you even though we couldn't come here. And one of the shows that uh, I did was uh, like a series of interviews with uh, families or adults and uh, just to talk to them about, you know, what they were doing and how things were going and, you know, just to share stories, basically, is all it was. And uh, one, of the, one of the interviews I had was with one of, the, one of, you, uh, one of you all, and it was a dad. Um, and, you know, he, he and I were chatting, and I said, well, how do you, you know, pandemic, what are you guys doing? He goes, well, it's an opportunity for us um, that I don't want to miss. I mean, to be able to be with your family all this time for all these days, for better or worse, here we are. We have to make the most of it, huh? And I said, well, how do you do that? How do you make the most of it? He goes, well, we all have jobs to do in our family, and this is an opportunity for us to maybe do things we haven't been doing, uh, catch up on work that maybe has been put off, to be creative and do new things. He goes, but basically our family motto in, in this moment is all hands on deck. All hands on deck. And I said, well, what does that mean? He goes, everybody's got a role to play. We all have a job to do. And, and for us to be the family that we're called to be, everybody's got to do their job. Everybody in the family has to do their job for this to work the way the Lord wants it to. All hands on deck. Let's talk about that a little bit, just from your own perspective and our perspective together. Now, we have the, during Easter, we do the book of Revelation. And this particular passage uh, from Revelation, from Revelation 5, is interesting. Um, well, they're all interesting, but first of all, why does the church put the book of Revelation last in the Bible? Okay, that's, that's, that's an important question. And there's a reason. If you listen to the book of Revelation and, and, and think about it for a moment, what you realize is, is what is being presented to us is a vision of heaven. That John is being brought, the author, John, who gave us his beautiful gospel, John 21, is also the author of Revelation. And he's basically he's sharing with us this vision of him being swept up to heaven and what he sees he sees the Lamb. He, he sees the saints. He sees the angels. He sees them giving praise. He sees them all together doing the one thing that they were created to do from all eternity, that you and I are created to do from all eternity, and which is to do what? To praise God, to worship God. All of us together, all hands on deck, doing the thing that we're made to do, which is to give praise to God. Worship. It's... It is the heavenly mass of what we, this, what we're here for right now is to taste, in a certain sense, that which is going on in heaven all the time. To give us a vision of what we're made for, worship. We do it here because we're going to do it for eternity in heaven. Okay. And what you see in John is this procession of all of creation moving towards God in praise. What you saw when I came in was me moving in to heaven. It's a procession. That's why we do that. It's like, why doesn't Father just kind of come up here and sit and wait for you guys, for everything to start? Why do we have to do this procession? It's because we are all moving with Christ into heaven. Jesus, in persona Christi, the priest representing Christ, comes in to heaven to offer worship to the Father, and we join our worship to the Father with Jesus in thanksgiving and praise because that's what we're made for. Because if we don't do worship, we don't do life. You want to get your life right? Get worship right. You want to get your family right? Get worship right. You want to get your money right, your sexuality right, your fertility right. You, you want to get your, your kids right, your job right, everything in your life. You want to get it right? Then learn how to worship. Learn how to give praise, because that's what you're made for. That's what we do here. 
Where does that come from? You know, there's a, here's the, here's the clue in Revelation. The very last book points us to the first book. I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and everything in the universe cry out to the one who sits on the throne, to the Lamb, blessing, honor, glory, praise, worship. Right there in the last book, it's pointing us to the first book. How does that point to Genesis? What was creation, brothers and sisters? That whole first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, God is creating out of nothing, creation. Starts from the least and he goes to the best, man. It's a procession of creation to what? The seventh day, which is what? The seventh day was rest. What is rest? Worship. Even the way God created us was an act of worship. The way creation is made in its procession from the beginning to the end is worship. And there was man, man and woman, in the beginning, in the garden, with God in the breezy time of the day. What were they doing? Worship. Until they weren't. Until they decided to be disobedient. They decided to look at themselves rather than God. And it all fell apart. So God sends a rescue operation, which is all the other books. From Genesis to Revelation is this rescue operation to get us back right, to get us back to proper worship, to get us back to heaven, to get us back to what we were made to be. Men and women in union with ourselves, with each other, with creation, and with God. Why is this world so messed up? Because nobody knows how to worship anymore. Nobody knows how to pray or give praise to God. You want to get your life right, you get worship right. You get your family right, get worship right. So this procession of Genesis becomes this procession of Revelation. And in, and in that great gift, for God so loved the world, he gave his only, only son, Jesus teaches us how to worship. This is, wor this is ultimate worship. Self-emptying, giving myself utterly, completely, to the will of the Father is an act of worship. And so when we come in and, and we come up in, unto the mountain of God to offer the Son to the Father together, all hands on deck, doing the thing for which we're made. If we all do, if we, none of it, if we don't do it together, it doesn't get done right. There's, there's worship. Okay, now. This beautiful reading, John, my favorite one. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now, the word that Jesus uses for love is agape, which is this. That's agape. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon, son of John, will you do this for me? Simon, son of John, will you worship all, with your whole life, will you pour yourself out totally and completely? Agape. Will you agape me? You know what Peter's response is? Lord, you know that I love you. But what's the word that Peter uses? It's philia. That's not agape. Philia, it's nice. It means friendship. <laughs> Peter, will you die for me? Hey, Jesus, I'll be friends with you. <laughs> when, it's, when it's convenient, I'll give you a call. <laughs> uh, I'll like your stuff on Facebook. <laughs> I like you. It's not the same, is it? Peter's, uh, Jesus is saying, Peter, will you worship? And Peter is saying, um, I'll get back to you. I'm not ready. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes. Feed my lambs. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Love me like I love you. No. So what does Jesus do the third time when he says, Simon, son of John, do you love me? You know what word he uses? You know what word Jesus, Jesus uses? Philia. All right, Simon, I know you're not going to agape me. 
but will you at least fully in me? Will you at least be friends with me? Simon, you're not ready, so I'll take you where you're at. All right, you're going to be my friend, but guess what? And that's why Simon gets upset. He was upset that Jesus asked him a third time. What's he upset about? Because he realizes that Jesus knows he's not in for it yet. He's upset with himself for not being able to say agape and only philia. But Jesus it takes him where he's at. All right, you only want a philia? You only want to be friends? Guess what? Simon, I'll accept it. Because when you were younger, you went around and did whatever you wanted. But when you get older, you are going to stretch out your hands and you are going to die and you are going to agape. I'm going to get it from you one way or the other. I'll take, what, I'll take what you're giving me now, but if you want this to work, it's all hands on deck. You've got to agape. You've got to die. You've got to pour yourself out. You've got to make the sacrifices. What is worship? It is offering your whole self. You want to get your family right? Then worship. Agape. Pour your whole life out for your wife, for your husband, for your kids, for everything that's important. You pour it all out. You give it all away. You agape. It's nice to be philia. It's nice to be friends. But what the Lord wants is everything else. Stop. Stop playing it cheap. Give him everything. That is worship. You want to get your life right and your marriage right, your kids right, your family right, then, then agape. Ah, that's what this means. I thought we were just sitting around the fire having fish. That fire is only one other place in Scripture where it talks about a charcoal fire. Do you know where that is? In the Praetorium, when Peter denied Jesus, he gathered around a charcoal fire and he denied Christ. He pulled an Adam and Eve. He went back to the garden and he was disobedient. He broke the line of worship and procession and glory and honor and praise. So Jesus brings him back to the fire. And where Peter denied three times, Jesus elicits from him a promise of love three times to get him back in the line of proper worship. Hundred and fifty three fish. In the Semitic understanding, that was the number of types of fish that were that were known. So the, the boat is the church. Slogging it through creation, slogging it through time, bringing with it all the world. And sometimes it's wearying and tiring. We feel like there's no fruit. We're not getting anything out of it. We don't know where it's going. We feel like we're not having any effect. I'm tired of it. Lord, just leave me alone. Let me just be friends with you. And he's saying, never. You are going to die because that's what life is ordered for. It is self-offering. It is offering yourself with Jesus to the Father, agape. So the church, the boat, the disciples are moving through creation, through the world, through time. And sometimes it feels like we're not catching anything. But in the end, with Jesus around the fire, supping together, we realize that our whole lives have been ordered to offering ourselves to Christ in this moment, at this time, no matter what we feel like we're getting out of it or what we're going to get in return, Jesus just wants us to give. Give yourself. Give your life. Give worship. Why are you here otherwise? Huh? We're here to gather around the fire. See the, the shadows play across our Lord's face. There as the sun breaks over the horizon. To look at him and through that visage see our own lives and our own experiences. And to cast that play of light of the Lord's love there right now in this moment today. Lord, what do you want me to do for you? How can I love you? By feeding your sheep, tending your sheep. How can I agape? Man, from the beginning to the end of all things, this is what life is. And this is the secret to your happiness. This and this alone. Now, 
hands on deck. Amen? Yeah, beautiful. Now, pardon me for my awkward transition here, segue. Uh, it's DSA, DSA Sunday, um, Diocesan Stewardship Appeal. Um, all hands on deck. One of the ways that we move the boat through, the, through time and experiences is to uh, offer to our brothers and sisters the help that the church can provide. The church needs us. Church receives from us all that she needs in order to bring that 153 fish into the boat. Yeah. So at the end of your pew are the, are the cards. Pass those out really quick. Let's not, let's not dally. Let's just get this done. And, um, and while you're doing that, just listen to me for a second, if you don't mind. And start filling them out. Uh, we, we've all done this before. Um, first of all, I apologize for, you know, we don't like doing this. This is my least favorite thing. Um, and I don't want to belabor it. I just said what I wanted to say. This is what flows from that. All hands on deck. Do you love me? Then agape me. Do you love me? Then pour yourself out for me. Do you love me? Then tend my sheep, feed my lambs, help my church. Okay. How do we help the church? By helping the bishop, by supporting his effort to uh, educate priests and deacons. I mean, you look at the number of priests and the guys who have come through here over the last number of years, and you know, we hit the jackpot and a lot of times. We've got great guys, these associates that come through here. And you look at Father Claytor, look at if, in, if you look at him, you look at Father Jack, and you look at Father, Father Ganella, and, and Father Mano, and, and Father Browning, and you say, wow, thank you, Lord. All right, folks, say, offer your, your thanksgiving for that gift. For no other reason, we're grateful for, to Bishop for the priest associates that he sent to us. But think about Catholic charities. Think about the marriage ministry, people getting annulments. Think about uh, the people who are the refugees who are being resettled. Think about the bishop coming and doing confirmation and all the things that he does for us as our bishop. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. All right. Feed my church. Feed my, feed my lambs. Take care of my people. All right. All I'm asking is that whatever you did last year, do it this year. All right, if you gave. Now, our DSA target this year is higher. Um, and so if you, can, if you have been blessed and you can give a little bit more this year than you gave last year, then please do that because we need your help. And remember, DSA, the amount that we are assessed and targeted, if we don't receive it from you, it comes out of our parish budget because we have to pay it. So if you don't, we don't do it this way, it's going to come out of our youth ministry. It's going to come out of our, our various other ministries. We don't want that. So let's, let's just, okay, we're, this is part of what we do. All hands on deck. We're all in this together. So if you're blessed and you can give more this year, great. If you feel like you can't, then whatever you did last year, give this year. If things are rough and you say, there's no way I can do what I did last year, then don't worry about it. Don't give as much or don't give anything. If, it's, if your circumstances have changed and you're struggling. Somebody who's been blessed will make up for it. And if you didn't give anything, all hands on deck. I need everybody here to help. So even if you feel like, you know, I don't like DSA and I don't want to give to DSA, I need you to give to DSA. Just even as a token to say we've all got skin in the game, Put a buck in the envelope and throw it in the collection basket. But don't just not do something because proper worship dictates that we do agape, which means we give everything in some way, shape, or form. There's no free ride. Huh? In other words, worship requires that we give our lives. Yeah. So brothers and sisters, um, take a couple minutes. I apologize. Uh, for sneaking this in at the end of the homily. All right, that's, yeah, that's not always good. And, uh, but as I say, uh, it's such an important thing. And even though we don't like to do it, it is so necessary. And if, you, if we don't do it this way, it, 
it's still going to happen. We're still going to take it out of our budget. So uh, that we don't want to do. I love you all. I love being your pastor. Uh, I love DSA uh, because I love Jesus, and we all do. And it's all hands on deck. All right? Take a couple minutes, and uh, we'll proceed with our, uh, with our creed. Huh?